Hi, this is a tool tote that I built a few years ago and it's uh, based on a design in uh, Shop Notes issue 120 which I, I really liked. This, this looks uh, very much like it. I just lengthened it a little bit and, uh, and I changed the construction details but otherwise it's, it's the same design. Now when I built this, it was in preparation for a workshop and I had about a, a weekend to get it built in anticipation. So I didn't uh, follow their, their construction details, which was uh, traditional joinery. It, had, it was all solid wood, dovetails, I, and I just didn't have the time. So I made this out of Baltic birch. Um, different thicknesses, half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch, and uh, which and dominoes, and that worked great. Uh, but the downside to Baltic birch is it's heavy. Uh, empty this weighs 12 pounds, which might not seem like much, but it's got some heft. And that's empty. I just weighed this, which is uh, loaded, to go to a workshop, and it's uh, 38 pounds. So uh, that's heavy. You wouldn't want to uh, take a stroll around the block carrying this thing. But it does serve its function in getting tools out of the workshop into the car and, and um, to its destination. Uh, I think I would like to make another version of this down the road out of uh, sugar pine and sticking with uh, the dovetail joinery. I think it would it'd be, uh, be much lighter. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at, at the tools that I carry in this and then we can also uh, take a look at some of, the, uh, some of the features of this tote that I, uh, uh, really attracted me to it. I have a subset of the tools from my workshop in here and uh, these just provide a core set of hand tools I like to have access to in a workshop. Uh, workshops I go to usually do still involve uh, power tools. So I have some ear protection, um, lung protection. I really like these 3M, 3M uh, models. Here's some uh, winding sticks I made just to some uh, plywood with uh, marker, black marker along one edge. Works great. Someday I'll make a nicer pair. Some uh, pinch sticks for confirming squareness. With a 24 inch ruler. This is um, oil impregnated rag stuffed into a piece of bamboo. I use this to oil the bottoms of my hand planes. So I'm an advocate of oil versus um, wax. My traveling mallet. This is a wood is good version. They have a few different sizes. These are really nice. Of course, everyone has to have their sterile combination square. I think, anyway. <laughs> speed square. Now, this might seem odd for a woodworker, but uh, once I found out how to use a speed square to uh, create any angle between 0 and 90 degrees, I fell in love with this. Uh, there's really no reason to use a protractor anymore. So, if you don't know how to use one of these, uh, do yourself a favor and uh, find out. Sanding block 220. This is actually uh, something that uh, Young Chan gave me in a workshop a few years ago. Uh, I think it was a workshop I actually made this for. And uh, he gave all the students one of these. And uh, it really turned me on to using. Uh, these kind of sanding blocks. I have others too of them. This one still uh, still works great. They're really really handy. Uh, let's 
Let's see. So I have uh, Stanley Yankee push drill. I have two saws. General purpose. This is a crosscut Veritas saw. And and a uh, Lee Nielsen dovetail saw. For planes, I carry a number four smoothing plane. Well, this is more kind of general purpose. I inherited this from my father, so there's special meaning to me. Uh, but I did replace the blade with a hawk blade and chip breaker. For smoothing, I have this Veritas 3. I think this is their, their small um, smoothing plane, probably equivalent to a 3. It's set for a very fine cut. It works great. Your uh, standard block plane, in this case a Stanley. And uh, St Sweetheart Stanley. I think from the 40s. This is a jack plane, number five. Uh, set up just for general purpose use. And then my uh, my router plane, in this case a Lee Nielsen. And that's it for the center compartment. There's room, there's room to pack more stuff in here if you just want to make it heavier, but um, this works for me. So let's take a look at what's in the, the side drawers. In this drawer, I carry my um, chisels and some screwdrivers. So these are just some traveling Sorby uh, chisels. And again, a subset, um, eighth inch, Eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch, and a, and a inch. Don't always bring a mortising chisel. In this case, I have a quarter inch mortising chisel. An old um, set of uh, dividers. Screwdriver, mostly for. Uh, adjusting the hand planes and then just a typical um, combination screwdriver with a full set of bits for anything else that might come up. And let's take a look at the other drawer. And this would be my, I'd classify as my Marking tools Dovet for uh, dovetails, marking dovetails, small square, uh, 12 foot um, tape measure, my uh, marking gauge, Cutting knife. I really like these these uh, Veritas. They're uh, really inexpensive and they work great. Safety glasses for the power tools. Couple um, couple rulers. I have these uh, general rulers all over the shop. I must have a well, a dozen might be an exaggeration, but I have a lot of these. I use them for scraping glue, for measuring. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really love them. They're super cheap. Eraser, mechanical pencil. This is what I use for all my uh, marking, non knife based marking. Traveling all. A pen. This is a power tank. It's a Japanese version of a space pen. So you can write upside down, you can write in the, in the rain, you can write on anything. Uh, works great. 
magnifier. These, uh, I think no matter how old you are, these, these can really come in handy sometimes, get into the details. Another thing I love, the Incra rules. I have, I have a few different sizes. This is a really nice uh, general purpose one that I, I reach to for an awful lot. I'm always getting splinters and uh, these things are great. I think I bought these from Lee Valley, but I wouldn't swear to it. But then a built-in magnifier and uh, super sharp. These things are just fantastic. You can find a pair like this, grab them. Bevel gauge and a notepad. Let's take a look at the details of, of this drawer. This is one of the uh, features of this tool tool, which, which, I, which I really liked. And that's the, the mechanism that keeps the drawer from coming out until you want it to come out. Now, again, uh, I, this, this is made from Baltic birch. In this case, I used um, half inch for the face, for the front. I think this uh, 3 8 inch for the, the other components, 8 inch plywood for the bottom. Um, but this is the, the part that, uh, that makes the drawer work in that there's a groove cut in the bottom of the tool tote. And on, your, um, on the drawer front, there's a corresponding uh, lip created just by cutting a, a short dado and this lip just fits into the groove so when you have uh, you have the drawer loaded up it's fairly heavy and it's, it does not want to certainly won't come out when you pull it and it doesn't tend to want to bounce out and so to pull it out you just lift it up a little bit so it can clear that groove and comes out. Works great. These drawers are uh, exactly half the depth of the tote, so you can, you can get a lot of, uh, you can really fill these up if you want to. Uh, so I really like that design. I can't remember uh, the original design for the, whether they had poles, but I opted just to drill a hole. And uh, I don't put anything small in here that'll want to come out to that hole. And um, it works great.